you and I, uh, you know, headed out that way. And Pat, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the evolution of supercomputing before we talk a little bit about themes and stuff we saw. I mean, look, there was no way in one day that we could get around and hear everything. And it wasn't one theme of supercomputing and there wasn't one announcement of supercomputing. But Pat, very interesting uh, event this year. First and foremost, absolutely jammed wall to wall. You and I got there uh, first night at, at what, 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time yeah. opening. And, and there was probably 10,000 people lined up at the doors. You know, we were we were getting shoved over. You and I, you know, the two wafery thin guys we are, we're getting shoved over by propeller heads, geeks, and AI uh, fanatics everywhere that had suddenly returned. Now, again, I talked to some people that had said over the last two or three years, you know, go back two, three years, obviously there was a period of time that that wasn't going on. The shows weren't going on. But the uh, supercomputing event had gotten thin. It had gotten sparse. It had become very out there and very geeky. Um, in the era of AI, and that's where the flops to tops joke came from. You know, we used to measure flops. Now we talk about tops in case anybody needed an explanation. Um, this, this was red hot. And so, you know, we saw it wasn't only, you know, the big, the big companies. We had a bunch of 6.5 videos with Lenovo. We talked to Lenovo. We talked to Lenovo's partners. Uh, we talked to like Imperial College and some of their their big users, Pat. And we talked to some of their executive team. Um, you know, we talked about everything from liquid cooling to next generation architectures uh, to exponential compute requirements and, you know, uh, clusters that had more GPUs uh, um, than an F1 car has horsepower. Sorry, I had to say that because I'm, you know, it's an F1 week. But, uh, yeah, you're wearing it, but I'm living it. I just want to point that out right now. I got, I got an invite, but my calendar was too full. So yeah, no, I know um, something about a sofa, French bulldogs, and and um, I don't know function. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, so it was a, but it was a, it was a really, really interesting show. And then, then there was a kind of like the, so the big companies, the HPEs, the Dells, the Lenovo's, all very active there, and of course all the Silicon, AMD's, Nvidia's, Intel, all on display. And then, Pat, there was just this massive ecosystem of sort of what I would call A series all the way to your C and D and E yeah. series companies there that were really on big display. And it wasn't just an HPC show. I want to be very clear. This was an AI show. There was companies that were in the AI space, GPU powered storage, like our friends at Aneria that we talked to. You had companies like Vast Data that are building new storage architectures that are, you know, powered by power, powered by AI that were there in a big way on display. Uh, you and I both saw the Grok Llama, who, you know, Grok very focused on accelerated computing, um, language processing units. We were running around spending time. You introduced me to Gopi, Gopi right, uh, from Oxiato, doing very interesting architectural uh, and security-related uh, uh, hardware for, you know, building next-generation compute network fabrics. So this was just a very interesting show, Pat, but what I really took away from it, and I know this might be like typical Dan oversimplifying things, but is that the world is really excited and, and kind of about, about AI and supercomputing is kind of the front edge of it. This is where we're seeing what all this AI at its maximum deployment with the biggest systems, the most cores <laughs> um, can do when put to work to solve problems in, in healthcare, to solve problems in engineering, to solve problems, you know, even like what things we talked about with like design. This is where that kind of innovation starts, Pat. And so, you know, as our friend Pat Gelsinger said something like the geek is back, this was like the geek is back moment. And by the way, you and I were the coolest guys there because we were at like bottom third by far of the IQ, but I would put us in the top third on the EQ. Uh, but all joking aside, Pat, love to get your takes on uh, what you thought about the event. I mean, you hit a bunch uh, here, and I do want to give Dan the trademark for flops to tops. Um, for those of you who don't know what a flop is, but know what a top is, it's a floating point operations per second. And that was the way that performance was measured in this space for a long time, right? Because you were doing uh, visualizations, you were doing uh, simulations, you were doing experiments, you were trying to recreate in the digital world, uh, recreate in the physical world in a digital uh, sense. And then 
over the past three or four years, uh, AI has has plopped in there. And on the machine learning front, uh, HPC uh, experts were using it to narrow down the data set uh, in terms of what the flops needed to work on. And now with generative AI, uh, it's 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 very different in that uh, they're actually using generative AI to change the way that that they try to solve these these problems. And, and it is truly cool. Uh, Dan, you and I talked uh, with the leaders from Imperial College, uh, the Flatiron Institute, with the, I want to call it the Henri system, not the Henry system. Uh, we talked to LRZ, the Leibniz uh, supercomputer uh, center uh, leader as well. And they all they said... They all had cool names, by the way. I can't they remember. They all had cool names. And they all said that, that the AI demands from their users are off the chain. And whether that's uh, their users they serve internally Right with the uh, uh, with the case uh, of um, uh, Imperial, uh, but also outside, uh, like you have with with LRZ. Uh, props to uh, HPE. We saw not a ribbon cutting, but a celebration and a toasting. Um, Justin Hotard, who runs uh, HPC business unit, uh, celebrating the Aurora computer uh, coming in as the number two um highest performance uh, not certified uh completely yet but it was only using half of its capability and if you want to know who's first it's also hpe the different supercomputer uh based on uh, amd technologies and um the uh the one that they were celebrating is based on uh, intel technology it took a long time to get aurora uh, across the line and in fact the silicon that was used in there was knight's landing uh, which was just completely uh, different architecture that has since been uh, put to bed. And Intel uh, had to create an entire GPU uh, uh, for uh, for that system. So it's good to see it uh, uh, come online. The number one and number two are still HPE. Uh, I want to give uh, the market share leader, Lenovo, uh, some kudos in there from a volume standpoint in the uh, in the top 100 and also thanks to them for letting us uh, interview some of their very important customers uh, and 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 executive um yeah the, the amount of of folks there from national institutes college institutes uh classic supercomputing people but also like you said uh the startups right the groks the neriads the uh, the Oxiados, uh, of the world, I don't know if it's even fair to call Vast a startup, given the uh, the revenue that they're uh, uh, that they're cranking out. But they're part of the action too, as they have a very interesting uh, proprietary uh, way of bundling uh, some of the operating system and the file system actually in into the unit itself. And you probably remember that uh, Vast and HPE just did a tie up. Uh, I forget, was it for block storage? One of the yeah. one of the capabilities. Yeah. It was uh, for GreenLake, yeah. Yeah, so interesting stuff. 